Thank you. Honorable Chairperson, distinguished delegates, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. It is indeed a great honor for me to be here, and I am thankful to the organizing committee for this opportunity to share with you this topic. Actually, I will switch from cows or cattle to sheep, and as uh, previously mentioned, I will uh, detail a little bit about my experience with the neurosurgical treatment, diagnostic imaging, clinical aspects in um, Synerosis cerebralis in sheep. Synerosis cerebralis is a fatal disorder of the nervous system in sheep and in humans. Actually, it's a very severe one. In human, the first case was diagnosed in Paris in 1913, and 70 years later, in US, a young little girl's four years was admitted in a hospital with a progressive generalized muscle weakness and other neurologic deficits. Finally, at the CAT scan, the doctor saw the cyst, the girl underwent the surgery. She was put it on chemotherapy with uh, praziquantel, but unhappily, the little girls didn't survive because the damage of the brain was so extensive and the uh, uh, survival rate was impossible. Actually, the mortality rate in the humans and in animals with sinurocerebralis cyst in the brain, it's 100%. In animals, there are a lot of publication, more or less, regarding to uh, post-mortem findings. Why? For sure, Romania is a country somewhere in East Europe. And uh, I was able to perform and the owners to pay for the surgery. For sure, in very advanced countries, this kind of surgery, it's kind of luxury. I remember these things, if I am right, Professor Steiner from Bern, in a talk he said, the farm animal surgery is two types, luxury and uh, convenience. Actually, I think this one is both. Anyway, regarding to the prevalence of uh, uh, cirrhosis cerebralis in sheep, the data is quite uh, different. It ranges from 1 or 2 percent up to 28.5 or even 57 percent in other countries. It is caused by cerebralis, which is the larval stage of tinea multiceps, which parasites in, in dogs or in carnivores in general, and the sheep and humans are just intermediate. Surgical removal of the cyst, or at least deflation of the cyst by uh, extraction of the fluid, is the only uh, therapeutic solution. Objective of this study was to evaluate the imagistic accuracy investigation for confirming the clinical aspects, and after that to describe and to evaluate the neurosurgical procedure for uh, cyst removal. In this study, I included just 18 naturally infected sheep in a time frame of three years, which I personally performed in the surgery clinic in our vet school, in Cluj-Napoca, Romania, was four different breeds, 10 males, eight U, up to 18 months of age, 44 kilogram maximum, all with neurological sign, and all these animals underwent imagistic investigation, especially Eric's 
and CT. MRI, at least now, is not available in our country for, for the farm animals. All 18 sheep underwent radiological examination and the CT. At the CT cross-section, it's very obvious the localization of the cyst. General anesthesia was performed using xylazine as a pre-anesthetic, induction with ketamine, and finally all animals underwent orotracheal intubation and maintenance with isoflurane. Regarding to surgical protocol, the animals was restrained in uh, uh, ventral recumbency, restraining the head with uh, ropes, and the surgical site was aseptically prepared just before the surgery and using tincture iodine or uh, betadine. After that, a median dorsal incision was made just caudal to the line which unifying the, the, the horns. It was about five centimeter incision. It's a quite well, well vascularized area. For that one, the electrocautery was needed to do the, the control of the bleeding. After that, an H-shaped periosteal incision was made. It allowed us to make uh, two flaps of periosteal, which actually was undermined and elevated. And after that was performed the craniotomy or craniectomy. I don't know which is really the best term for this one. Actually, for that one, we use an oscillated uh, saw blade. I uh, cut it a squared bone flap, which actually was undermined, and actually it was detached. Because this is an intradural procedure, I perform the durotomy, use a very tiny banded 20G needles. I make a very small tear in the uh, meningeal layers. Sometimes, because of pressure from the cyst, when the cysts are located under the meningeal, usually the cyst will protrude itself. But in some cases, even if you have the CT, uh, is need, and it looks like to be superficial, is need to tear the dura mater, doing the durotomy. After that one, because of pressure, we did the cyst. Usually, the cyst will protrude. It will bulge outside at the craniotomy uh, level. To be able to remove it, is need to make a puncture to aspirate some fluid. And after that, it will allow to grab the cyst with a very tiny uh, forceps using one or two. And by twisting, at the end, you will extract the cyst or the vesicle. More challenge is when the cysts are located deep in the, in the brain, in the hemisphere. And in that case, it's kind of blind neuron navigation using an 18 G needles guided by the uh, CT, actually you will try to find, you will try to find the cyst. In that cases, if you are lucky enough, you will stitch in the cyst, you will aspirate, you will deflate it, and probably if you are uh, 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 very, very careful, you will try to dissect and to isolate the cyst, and after that to do the same procedure. After you will remove the cyst in one or other way, is need to reconstruct uh, the, the, the anatomical place. That means the square flap will be put it back on the position at the very early surgeries. I did a kind of osteosynthesis. I fix it with a, a, a metal wires doing kind of uh, a osteography. But in this case, it's just I put the bone flap back and over I sutured the periosteal flaps together with the subcutaneous and facial tissue. At, at the very end, suture of the skin, putting a bandage over, 
and post-op about five days cephalexin, one shot of meloxicam, and actually here is the post-op appearance, usually in the first hour after the surgery, the animals will just stand, is starting to eat, and the recovery is impressive. Looks like the brain is not so sensitive in sheep, especially how we thought. Uh, I don't know what is happened in human when there you will be removed sometime a cyst which has 150, 170 cc. You can see in the, in the cranial cavity a big empty space and in the next two hours the sheep is just standing, walking and looks like it's a normal behavior. Actually, with the CT, it allowed us to do a very precise localization. Seven were in the left, eight in the right lobe, and in three cases, the cyst was quite large and it invaded both uh, hemisphere. We identify a lot of clinical symptoms and honestly, I was not able to make a very tight correlation between where it was localized, uh, localized and what clinical symptom I observed. As I told you earlier, the sheep recover quite nice. Usually within three, four hour post op, the sheep standing and started to eat. One sheep was euthanized because she was in recumbency before the surgery and we decided to do the euthanasia. And in one, at the very beginning, I had a very severe hemorrhage from the central uh, uh, artery, and it was an intraoperative death. But with all these two lost, actually, the recovery or successful rate was 88%. Conclusion, I would say this is the only one curative solution. CT, I consider, is the golden standard for the diagnosis. Regarding to the follow-up, I am in contact with the owners because it's a time frame of three years because it's a retrospective study. All of them, they reported the animals ram because they are for reproduction, they are back to the normal life, they are alive, and uh, I consider Neurosurgery is approachable and is feasible even if in the farm animals. Thank you for your attention.